Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And today I want to talk about Israel and Gaza, but specifically the whole idea of uh, the list of items that Israel's decided can and cannot go into Gaza. And uh, there's been a lot of restrictions by Israeli government on what uh, access Palestinians have to a lot of things, but uh, I'm going to deal mostly with what happened after the 2006 um, blockade. And some of the some of the items that were previously uh, forbidden in, in Gaza, there was a, a loosening in 2010. So I'll, I'll deal with uh, both of those. But it's uh, something I was curious about because I heard about certain things that were not allowed into Gaza at a certain point, like chocolate and pasta. And I was very, very curious as to all the other things that are not allowed. And uh, even though this story is had a high profile uh, due to the, uh, the blockade running that's happened over the years. Um, I was still surprised to find out some of this uh, information, particularly how it relates right now as, as uh, Gaza um, is, uh, has been destroyed by all these uh, uh, military strikes by the Israelis for the last several weeks. And one of the things that's important to remember is that all these buildings that are destroyed in Gaza because of the blockade of the materials that are allowed in there, most of these buildings will never be rebuilt. And uh, that's something important to remember. And we also have to remember that uh, the, the only seaport in Gaza was destroyed by Israel in, in the last uh, couple of assaults on Gaza, and they've never been rebuilt. There's an uh, airport in Gaza that was destroyed by Israel in their last assaults, and it was never rebuilt, so Gaza has no airport to speak of and no seaport to speak of. And 95% um, of the industry in Gaza is in suspension because they can't get the materials to even conduct their business. So that's something to remember, too. All the industry in Gaza is at a standstill. They have one of the highest unemployment rates in the world at 34%. And 80% of the population is living on food aid from the UN and various organizations and not not to mention the poverty and hunger levels there so a, a really tragic situation all around and, and then we also have the, the blockade also includes uh, uh, affects 40,000 fishermen in Gaza um, in 2006 there was a total ban on fishing but now Israel allows a, a fishing within a six miles off the coast and according to the Oslo Accords they're supposed to have uh, access to fishing 20 miles. According to the UN, they're, they're given 12 miles, but according to their, their masters, Israel, they only get six miles. As you can imagine, uh, not only are uh, uh, Palestinian fishing boats uh, fired on, on, on all sorts of occasions, but uh, the fish close in at six miles have been heavily uh, fished and depleted, and therefore they're not getting much fish. Uh, most of the large schools are further off the coast, of course, uh, all the other countries in the region have access, but not Gaza. And, um, and this ties in with the uh, embargo as well, because uh, fresh fish for a long time were not allowed into Gaza. Uh, they could only get frozen fish, and ironically, they had to buy it from Israel. And um, we also have a situation where uh, most of the ties between Gaza and the West Bank have been cut, and therefore uh, there's, there can be no assistance to Gaza from uh, Palestinians or even family members who live in the West Bank. And um, let's also remember that uh, there's this huge wall that encircles uh, Gaza, uh, and not all the land inside uh, is for the Palestinians. In fact, there's a 300-meter buffer zone uh, within the fence, and uh, so a lot of potential agricultural land is really off-limits to Palestinians even though Gaza is supposedly theirs. But uh, let's get back to uh, some of these uh, blockaded items. Um, there's only about, a, uh, in 2006, there's only about 100 items that were allowed in Gaza, uh, according to uh, Harris Magazine uh, newspaper in Israel. Um, before the blockade, uh, 4,000 items were allowed. And, and that's what I meant before. That there's a lot of restrictions on what was allowed in, in Gaza before uh, the blockade, uh, 4,000 items, but they, they ran it down to merely 100 um, as of uh, 
May 2010. And uh, to, buy, to give you a comparison, a, an average large Israeli supermarket has 10 to 15,000 items. So, of course, Israeli citizens have the pick of 10 to 15,000 items down at their store, and Palestinians are allowed somewhere around 100. And uh, some of these things are, are understandable as far as why they might be a, uh, part of a blockade, They're dual purpose, and could be used for military and, and the like. And um, But the degree by which uh, all these materials are withheld from a population of 2 million uh, is really a sad statement, for sure. Um, so let's look at a list of what wasn't allowed in Gaza. And this is a list that was a, a partial, and this is only a partial list um, as of 2010. And it actually took a lot of uh, diplomatic efforts and a lot of pressure on Israel to even reveal uh, what items they would not allow into Gaza, and that says something in itself. And in fact, apparently, uh, after John Kerry visited, he was so shocked by what the, the Palestinians were not allowed by the government of Israel that uh, Israel threw him a bone and said, well, we'll allow, we'll allow them to have pasta. Um, so, so anyway, uh, here's all the things that are not allowed uh, in Gaza by the Israeli masters. Uh, cement, wood, iron, steel, paint, uh, doors, plastic piping, medicine for animals, cattle, notebooks, musical instruments, ball bearings, lathes, fertilizer, knives, machetes, diving equipment, parachutes, steel cables, casting forms, asphalt, lumber beams, fuel, tar, plaster, fresh meat, uh, horses, donkeys, and goats, uh, generators, high voltage ca cables, uh, all these things not allowed into Gaza, and, and surprising sometimes when you think, well, how can they even sustain any sort of culture in Gaza if they're not allowed fresh meat, horses, donkeys, goats? Uh, what, what, what's the punishment uh, that is Israel's doling out? They can't have musical instruments or notebooks or medicine for their animals. Um, certainly fertilizers can be made into bombs, knives and machetes can be weapons. Uh, but that's, that's, it, once again, that seems rather restrictive collective punishment of an entire population uh, in Gaza that uh, cannot uh, sustain any, anything close to a, a normal uh, sense of life or uh, agricultural industry. Uh, the, the list of things allowed is flour, sugar, rice, salt, cooking oil, semolina, yeast, chickpeas, beans, lentils, wheat, corn, powdered milk, margarine, dairy products, frozen meat, frozen fish, frozen vegetables, and hummus paste. So uh, obviously they, they want to put the Palestinians in, on, on a diet, and they're only allowing them the most basic of foodstuffs. And uh, it's a uh, part of their uh, uh, control. Is they even count uh, how much calories uh, will be allowed in per citizen, um, which ironically is something that the uh, the Nazis did at the Warsaw Ghetto as well. Uh, actually figuring out how many calories they would allow within the um, the prison and, uh, and how much uh, how much they could allow uh, uh, before anybody actually starves so but uh, like I say in 2010 uh, they oh and, and vehicles are also only private cars are allowed to be in Gaza obviously no trucks no heavy equipment so there's going to be a lot of restrictions of what kind of society they can develop in Gaza as well um, without uh, all these other types of vehicles. So after uh, 2010, these are the things they allowed that were previous ban previously banned. So let's remember that when I read this list. They can have these items in Gaza now, but previous to 2010, these were banned in Gaza as well. And that includes soda pop, jam, spices, shaving cream, potato chips, cookies, candy, chocolate, pasta, juice, lentils, tomato paste, soccer balls, crayons, dry food, ginger, books, candles, light bulbs, matches, needles, and wheelchairs. So I'd like for someone out there to explain to me, um, unless this is collective punishment, uh, why all the things I just listed off would be forbidden from a population. So anybody um, that thinks uh, or uh, tells me, and in fact I've had um, Israelis uh, uh, comment to me, about all the human rights that Israel gives to people living in Gaza and Palestinians. And when I see this list, I don't see anything remotely close to human rights. And I see 
collective punishment. And uh, in, in uh, internal documents, government documents, uh, Israel even describes it as, quote, economic warfare, unquote. And that's exactly what it is. And um, it's just another form of collective punishment and vengeance. And uh, like I say, the court courts had to uh, force Israel to, to even reveal what's on these lists. And that tells you they know uh, what kind of impact it has uh, when people find out about these lists. They're ashamed of it. Uh, they know exactly what they're doing, and they didn't want their dirty uh, laundry exposed. Uh, certainly it doesn't affect their national security to have these lists of what they control going in and out of Gaza. Um, and certainly there's uh, constantly changes made to the list, and that's one thing that complicates things, too. It's done on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, for example, now uh, no commercially produced CDs or DVDs are allowed in Gaza, so there's a uh, somewhat of a bootleg industry, but to think that uh, Israel will not allow them to have musical instruments and then will not allow them to have uh, mo uh, movie discs or music discs in Gaza is just more um, collective punishment. And, 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 and all this stuff that we take for granted in uh, these easy, fat, um, complacent Western societies, uh, imagine doing without all this stuff, and particularly imagine a government uh, that's occupying your land and has put you into a uh, open air prison with 24 foot walls around it and they can tell you what you can have and what you can't have. What kind of way is that for anyone to live? And I, I don't care about these claims of Israel that they need to collectively punish everyone in Gaza uh, for Hamas and, and this whole Hamas issue is it's much more complicated anyway but it just doesn't uh, it just doesn't wash that the population has to, to live in this um, primitive setting without uh, any luxuries whatsoever and barely the staples of life, um, only to be uh, uh, routinely uh, harassed and assaulted and, and, of course, as we see now, invaded. But uh, to go back to, to the list, we also have Internet speeds in Gaza. Just as an example, things that everyone takes for granted are, of course, unbearably slow and that's another way people in, in, in Gaza are, are punished. Apparently it takes 24 hours just to download one album. So so anyway there's a, a, a little glimpse of, of the reality of what, of what people in Gaza have to live with and um, I know there's a lot of people out there that really don't give a shit and really don't care and have no empathy for the Palestinians but uh, I'm one of those people who does and the fact that they're put through this uh, is really astonishing. It's really astonishing that the world can stand by and watch this. And aside from the assault on Gaza, to just have a, a people displaced and then treated this way is, is, is truly hideous. And, and part of that, too, is uh, this justification by Israel about going in and uh, uh, bombing all these tunnels. And they try to depict it like all these tunnels are all about uh, terrorists hiding weapons and hiding rockets and burrowing into Israel to kill and kidnap Israeli citizens. Well, I put forth the, the idea that, first of all, we don't have uh, very many accounts of uh, uh, Palestinians slipping through tunnels out of Gaza in order to kill and kidnap Israeli citizens. So, so much for that kind of justification that we get from the Zionist government. But uh, one thing I do know, most of those tunnels are because of this very list of items that I told you about that are blockaded. Uh, we have Palestinians, and I, I don't want to negate the fact that certainly, to a certain degree, some of these tunnels are going to be used by Hamas uh, or, or, you, or used by other actual, there's other jihad groups in, uh, in Gaza. And I, I don't deny that there's going to be some usage, but predominantly all these tunnels are for smuggling goods into Gaza. If you have a, a a city of two million like that, and for a period of time you weren't even allowed to get toilet paper, you'd find a way to, to build these tunnels and try and maintain some sort of semblance of, of a normal daily life in Gaza, which is virtually impossible under these conditions. Uh, just a, a horrible situation. I, once again, I want everybody to, to think very carefully about all the things that you take for granted, uh, all the simplicities uh, down to the basic necessities of life and having a government uh, deny you all of those things and how you would feel.
I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.